explodes in a small town in Taiwan. President Hamid Karzai signs the new constitution of Afghanistan. And the day is just getting started. In North America, at around 8 a.m., an email appears in the inbox of a few users. Upon opening, there's an attachment. It has a generic name like document.txt or readme.doc, and to the mind of an unsuspecting 2004 human, it looks legit. Right now, the virus, also known as My Doom, is now copying itself to the Windows System folder and replacing an existing file called taskmon.exe. It also creates the file shimjappy.dll in the same directory. This is a backdoor trojan that opens TCP listening ports ranging from 3127 to 3198. A TCP listening port is a network protocol that an application listens to. It acts as a communication endpoint, so in this case it acts as a portal that can download and execute other files from wherever the virus was originally deployed. One of these files is simply named message. The worm then creates two registry keys. The first one says that whenever the computer is rebooted, the same worm will run again. The second one says that whenever the user opens Internet Explorer, the file created earlier, Shimjapi, will also run. To the unsuspecting user, nothing is happening. In the background, the worm is now propagating itself, sending emails using the original computer's network to other users. It disguises under randomly generated email addresses with generic names like Adam, Alex, Dan, Maria, and Sandra. But this worm isn't blind, it's smart. It avoids sending itself to domains that would house users that could discover it. Domains like .edu, .gov, and others. It also avoids informational addresses like help at or admin at. And that's just before lunch. You are watching this love TV. By the midday sun, the worm has slowed overall global internet performance by approximately 10%. Average web page loading time slow by 50%. The computing community is reporting that one in 10 email messages now contain the virus. The SEO Group, a software company creating Linux products, offers a $250,000 reward for information leading to the arrest of the worm's creator. The FBI and Secret Service also open investigations. A second version of the worm has surfaced, mydoom.b. This new version includes a denial of service attack against the SEO group and an identical attack against Microsoft. The worm will launch 64 threads, each of them requesting the main page of the websites. This process of requesting 64 times is repeated every second. The request is simple, git HTTP 1.1 from every infected machine throughout the globe. It's scheduled to begin in six days. fast asleep behind a set of blackout curtains. Between the realm of lucidity and waking, he hears something. He gets out of bed, runs to a panic room, shuts the door, and waits. I will become master of the universe. Bruised and battered, a mother leaves her alcoholic husband for the last time. She brings with her a suitcase of belongings, and her only son. Over the subsequent years, the chaos turns to order. The young kid excels in school, makes his way to the top of the class, a model rule follower. Then, one evening, in 1985, at just 11 years old, 
he spots it in a shop window. The Commodore 16. Over the subsequent weeks, he pleads with his mother to buy it for him. Eventually, she scrapes her earnings together and purchases the terminal. Like a window into a foreign world, pixels behind the screen illuminate his curiosity into a newfound realm of ones and zeros. Self-taught, self-learning, this is a step far removed from the strict guidelines of school he's grown so accustomed to. Now, at age 15, as his interest in computers reaches an all-time high, his grades drop to all-time lows. He's held back a year, but he doesn't care. The wild west of anonymous chat rooms filled with stolen credit cards, NASA safeguards, and Pentagon files are calling his name day and night. He takes the pseudonym and begins traveling back and forth across the Atlantic Ocean, intercepting telephone companies, pushing cybernetic buttons, all while sitting in the comfort of his mother's apartment. On one of these anonymous boards, he meets another teen hacker. The two hit it off. Eventually, at 16, Kimball starts up an early phone connection company that allows two parties to connect and talk. The more callers that are simultaneously connected to his service, the higher a profit he can claim on the lines. He begins using stolen credit card numbers to increase this number, a practice that would soon land him a few days in a jail cell before being released with some fines. The business continues growing, and by the time he's 18, he's making nearly 200,000 per year. He moves out, gets a Mercedes, rides on the Autobahn. For him, the limitless road is a meditative experience. He puts in a tape, maxes out the stereo, and follows the lines towards his The world fades out. He feels as though he's flying in space. This is where he thinks. Business plan, code structures, Quake 2 strategies, then between Berlin and Munich, a car cuts in front of him. At nearly 250 kilometers per hour, he flashes his lights for the car to move. It doesn't budge. He's forced to tap on the brakes. Five months earlier, he disabled the automatic stability control on his Mercedes. This light tap on the brakes causes the car to lose traction on the pavement. He turns sideways and crashes straight into the metal barrier. Without seat belts, him, his girlfriend, and three friends are hurled into the air. Experts discover something in the code, an error that will deem the attack non-functional on the Day of Reckoning. Some skeptics warn that the error may be a decoy intended to conceal the true purpose of MyDoom. MyDoom B is now blocking access to websites of over 60 computer security companies as well as ads by DoubleClick and other online marketing agencies. It's spreading, but not as fast as MyDoom A. One in every five emails now contain the worm. We have reached the peak. Microsoft offers an additional 250000 to the reward. The denial of service attack begins two days earlier than expected. An estimated 1 million computers, now infected, send connections to SCO. The company responds by removing their original domain from operation. The second attack begins, this time aimed at Microsoft. Microsoft responds by directing users to a website, unaffected by the attack. The attack, at this point, has remained minimal. Microsoft.com remains functional. A second worm, known as Doomchoose, has appeared. It rides the tail end of my doom by sneaking into a back door left open. Its purpose is the same as its big brother a DDoS against Microsoft. However, it doesn't make much of a dent. My Doom A stops spreading. The back door remains open. 
someone triggers my doom B and stops it from spreading. The back door remains open. Cyberspace returns to relative normality. While the creator of the virus remains a mystery, the country of origin has been pinpointed to Russia. A variant of my doom attacks Google, completely stopping functionality of the website for a large portion of the day. New versions begin surfacing. My doom U, V, W, and X infect more computers and install more backdoors, sparking worries that a new, more powerful my doom is brewing. My doom version AO is born. Then, silence. Just an hour ago, we had an attack. We learned from the NYSC that they've had some kind of denial of service attack on their website. U.S. authorities say North Korea may be responsible for cyber attacks on government websites in the United States and South Korea. The code was called Trojan.dozer, and much of the language it's written in appears to be reused from the MyDoom worm. But the original hasn't resurfaced. The ransom money remains unclaimed. The estimated damages the virus caused roughly 38 billion US The individual or the group behind the virus has yet to be found, remaining in the shadows of cyberspace. And here we go. You can see already the massive amount of traffic being pushed out of this virtual machine. Uh, for every black hat hacker, there's a white hat hacker. Someone hired by a company to specialize in breaking software to ensure maximum security. These people know the ins and outs of computer science, but they started at the fundamentals. Offers foundational computer science courses for a fraction of the cost of traditional university rates. Whether you're looking to become a software developer, network architect, or just want to feed your brain new valuable information, the computer science fundamentals course will help wrap your mind around computational thinking ranging from everyday tasks to algorithms. Topics include decision trees that computers use to boil down the many into one, or computational problem solving that presents simple real-world problems to explain complex concepts. You can prepare yourself for career paths in computation via brilliant.org slash disrupt for free. Or, if you want to unlock all 60 plus courses, the first 200 people that sign up will get a 7 day trial of premium, plus 20% off the annual subscription. Build your framework at brilliant.org slash disrupt. Sitting in the recovery room, he makes a vow to himself. He wants to live life to even more extremes. As he puts it, live life to the fullest. By 1994, Kimball and Scousy. real name Ortman, start a business together. One brings a startup oriented mind, the other brings a code oriented mind. The company grows, and over the next seven years, it transforms into a multi million dollar endeavor a business offering network pressure tests and attack simulations. Eventually, the two sell it off. With a large personal fortune in their back pockets, they enter the turn of the century. We are now in the year 2000. The entire world seems to be moving to wirelessness. Will we all be able to interface with a giant supercomputer? Will we all have the ability to access and process information by mobile telephones or some type of handheld technology? What will the implications be? Who will benefit? Who will lose? Sorry. I'm getting ahead of myself. It's around this time Kimball changes his real name from Kim Schmitz 
then to Kim Vester, then to an homage around the technology upon which his fortune is built. Kim.com He spares no expense. Parties, yachts, more parties, more yachts. His wealth not only grows, but his earthly status. He's ranked among the top titans in the dot-com bubble, the ones that made it out on top. Racing cars remain his favorite pastime, these days on closed courses. One of the largest of such events is called the Gumball 3000. Thousands of fans and racers gather for an annual 3,000 mile, six day trek. Tons of footage of the event is captured and shared through email. The problem is, the higher quality the video, the larger the file size. The larger the file size, the more bandwidth it would take to send the email. Without YouTube or Dropbox, bandwidth meant money. Kim is planning a concept known as the ultimate rally, the Gumball 3000 on steroids. To create buzz within the racing community, he hosts a competition. Those that could send the best street racing videos would win cash prizes. In an early email discussing the concept with his business partners, he writes, Instead of sending the actual file, users could simply upload the file once on a hosted server, then send that link to the recipients, who would then download the video using their own bandwidth. In May 2005, Kim van der Kolk, a developer he met years earlier, and his childhood friend Ortman start running the business in Hong Kong. They are in what is dubbed as a blue ocean. There's no competition here. No other startups sailing toward the unknown business model of file sharing over cyberspace. Kim and his team are the first explorers into this new world. The links spread like comets. First in racing communities, then beyond those roads to the wider public. Over the next two years, bandwidth prices fall and technology improves, meaning higher profit margins for the small company. By 2007, there are hundreds of file sharing competitors. A few have overtaken them, but Mega is quickly rising again in the ranks, largely due to a unique program they've set up, incentives for file sharing. You've got mail. Forbes inquires about an interview. Within their request, they mentioned wanting to discuss copyright allegations involving a Kim Schmitz. Kim.com writes back using an email that appears to be from a mega upload employee. He forwards the email to Ortman with the attached note. Users are sharing copyrighted films and music on these websites and some of the users might be receiving cash rewards for their uploads. This piques the interest of studios. The studios send letters of complaint to the file sharing services, and the file sharing services remove the files. But Mega Upload has a different system. There's no search query on the website. Instead, users upload a file and get a unique link. To spread the link, they must post it off-site wherever they see fit. If two users upload the same piece of content, for example, a video of Butter go, butter on. Mega Upload would simply give user number two a unique link that is directed to the root file that user number one uploaded before. This saves them bandwidth. When receiving a copyright complaint, Mega provides a DMCA platform to remove the infringing links that they came across. However, this process only squashes the original links. It doesn't remove the root file. Mega Uploads infrastructure. According to Mega Uploads lawyers, this system is above and beyond the wording DMCA. Kim is gaming in his mansion. Mega Upload has reached the height of its success. It accounts for nearly 50 million users per day, 4% of the internet traffic on Earth. 
where before he had a 30 millisecond delay between his home and the Australian servers, he's now having a nearly 80 millisecond delay. Unbeknownst to him, Someone is watching. With most of his daily tasks delegated amongst his team, Kim is beginning to lessen his involvement with the mega operation. He now spends his free time creating music. He mixes at his studio in Auckland throughout the night, then sleeps during the day. Kim exits his studio and is driven home. He's fast asleep behind a set of blackout curtains. Between the realm of lucidity and waking, he hears something in the distance. Wayne Tempero, Kim's personal bodyguard, dashes out the back door, only to be met with the barrel of a gun. Held up in a safe room, Kim isn't sure if it's police or kidnappers. In case it's the latter, he unlocks his safe to retrieve a handlebar shotgun. Body armored wave of police storm the mansion. Intel had been given to the police team that Kim is a seasoned gun brandishing criminal, potentially ready for a gunfight, but he's nowhere to be found. They call on Kim's bodyguard. Wayne enters the room and shows the officers the secret entrance. Ground units from they call before moving in further. Gates are open. Slowly, past the shotgun resting in the half open safe. They spot him. Kim is brought down to the backyard, along with Mega Upload co-founder Matthias Ortman and his five children. He walks past his wife. He tells her. Come on. I have legitimate stuff on Mega Upload. How dare you, you internet mongering crap government people over the subsequent months the indictment words mega upload as a conspiracy stating the mega conspiracy reproduces and distributes copies of popular copyrighted content over the internet without authorization it's also claimed that the mega conspiracy created a smokescreen dmca tool that failed to delete the root files of copyrighted content. We can't be liable for actions of third parties. Shouts from studios and copyright enforcers say the, quote, worldwide criminal organization of the mega empire should be brought down. Most of Kim and the co-founder's assets are seized, including the mega upload domains. The involved are released on bail and sent back to their subsequent home countries to await trial. You know, I will fight it. That's all I can do. Prosecutors are pushing for max sentencing, resulting in up to 20 years for each. Now, the High Court of New Zealand Justice argues that the warrants used to seize .com's properties were illegally obtained because they were too broad. Ultimately, this is overturned. Negotiations opened between Mega and the U.S. Justice Department. Mega asked that the site be made available for users to back up their personal data. The request is denied. A year later, the website's former hosting provider deletes the data, and the case remains in legal limbo. If you take all movies, music files, together that have ever been made, and even you have 10 instances per movie, per music file, you will never have more than 100 million files. So if we have 12 billion unique files on our service, it clearly shows that the legitimate uh, number of files outweighs any infringement by a vast majority. Kim starts a new file sharing service, this time to shield the company from being responsible for DMCA compliance. From the time of upload, the user's content is immediately encrypted. Computers have become so advanced that like, you know, if someone could come up with the same amount of like, hacking power or hacking skills that someone had in like the 90s when computers were simple, was simpler, if they had that same amount of power nowadays to computers nowadays, 
the amount of information and data they could gather from, you know, from government facilities, from social media networks, and like like when this all this was happening, Facebook and and Instagram, it, it, definitely Snapchat, were all very new, and so the idea of somebody stealing personal data back then was pretty uncommon, and so now if someone had that power the amount of like you know deleted quote unquote Im- images on snapchat would just be infinite um yeah i just thought that'd be crazy if someone had that amount of power man our our clever <laughs> lives in a maze <laughs>